Introducing New Age Sandwich Slices. It sure tastes like cheese. With a lot less cholesterol. Welcome to the Lot Book Podcast. This is episode 36, 14th of June 2016. In tonight's show, Rob is handed over to the High Septum, gender pronoun patches, Dungeons and Dragons as therapy, and good news, everybody, LARP archery. Now, tonight's episode is brought to you by LARPIN at LARPIN.co.uk. For everything you could possibly need for your LARPing needs, go to LARPIN.co.uk. That's L-A-R-P-I-N-N dot co dot U-K. Right, I'm your host, Stuart Edwards. Let's crack on with the show. Right then, uh, just let you know it's just me tonight. Um, so, should you want to call in... Uh, you can use, uh, go on Skype, uh, I think it's LARP Book Show. Search for that, call in, and I'll answer any questions, etc. I do have a few bits of pieces to get through, but if you interrupt me, you interrupt me. No biggie, you know what I mean? And just turn down that music just a little bit. Right then, so let's start off then. So, um, yeah, Rob is not with us tonight, as he's actually been handed over to the High Septon um, for being a bad, bad boy. Um, he got Klaus's name wrong. Uh, this is Klaus, of course. Uh, so he has to go over now to the High Septum um, to do the Walk of Shame and to renounce all of his sins. Uh, sorry, Rob, but that's just the way it is. Um, Tom's not with us. Um, uh, Tom isn't with us because um, he's not very well. He is in the chat. How I have you, but he doesn't feel like doing a show tonight, and that's fine. And I could, you know, I don't blame him at all. When you're not well, doing something like this, it's not good. You know, you just sit there like that. Yeah. So, get well soon, Tom. <laughs> right then. Ba, 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 ba. Let's have a look. So, uh, right, dystopia risings. Right. Interesting. This is all about the the gender pronoun patches. Um. You just drag it down a little bit more. This is a bit louder in my ears. Uh, so, they've got... A ba- okay, Dystopia Rising's gender pronoun patches promote inclusiveness in our hobby. Now, recently, Dystopia Rising has adopted the use of gender pronoun patches. These are physical patches that you actually put onto your costume. Um, these patches are bright yellow and about three inches across and fit in most... Um, dystopia rising costume seamlessly now they are excellent i've i did have a little look at them um and just loading up that web page quick they got something like a, a big sort of yellow uh, patch but it's got she her hers uh, he in in large case him his and they them and theirs now the idea about this as as far as i can see Um, is if you are a female character that is playing a male character or if you are female and identify yourself as male whichever way you want to look about it this patch will basically let people know um, what sort of how to address you yeah so rather than someone getting upset um, although I would say all right great idea I'm sure it could be sorted out with someone just saying actually if you don't mind could you just address me as Loretta all right um, then you know then from that point forwards but they're trying to cut through all of that red tape and by actually sort of having these patches it's a nice idea I like it I think it might be a little bit unnecessary but that's only my two cents you're just gonna get my two cents tonight folks right so you're gonna finally see what a bigoted arsehole I can be um, so I got a sneaky feeling that this show is going to be fairly short tonight. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, so, but a great, you know, great idea. It is a good idea. 
Now, Dungeons and Dragons as Therapy. Now, this is one I can definitely talk about. Um, right, so the, the it's up on the Geek and Sundry website. All the links and what have you will be in the show notes. Yes, you can get to all, all of the pages that we, uh, we talk about tonight. Uh, so it says, you read that right. Dungeons and Dragons isn't just an awesome game. It can also be used in a therapeutic manner to help teens learn social skills. Now, I like this idea. It was very interesting. Um, I... Uh, attend a D&D game uh, with my friends every fortnight um, and we have <laughs> and we have some some very interesting conversations let's say um, some of them political some of them not a lot of them usually just slagging off one another uh, when we're trying to do something stupid Right, or saying you never get involved, etc. So it can be a very good uh, way of of looking at social in- interaction. I mean, that is D and D in a nutshell. Oh, and blatting a few monsters, but D and D in a nutshell is uh, social interaction. So what this guy does is he says by using D and D in a therapy session, it basically takes therapeutic role play to a new and creative level. Instead of imitating a regular conversation, uh, the kids get immersed into quests and are able to flourish in the game setting. Regular social situations often have much higher perceived stakes for failing and often lead to increased pressure or anxiety. However, using D&D can provide carefully crafted, slower paced and highly monitored scenarios to offer socialization practice in easier to digest bites. Kids who struggle to react appropriately in regular social situations often feel more at ease when interacting in a role-playing setting because they are responding to others under the guise of their character rather than themselves. Now the doctor's name, which I'm going to murder, and it does sound like an excellent coffee, Dr. Obokamazo even noticed that some of the kids who struggle to make eye contact in real life completely blossom and take on diplomatic roles in the game. So, um, is it easier uh, to do social interaction when it's not you, i.e. a character? Yes. Because we've, we've all done it. Anybody that's lapped has found it much simpler to actually just do uh, social interaction because it has no real consequences. But to use it as a learning tool uh, for teenagers who are incredibly socially awkward or might even have a learning difficulty and this is a way to teach them, especially if, <coughs> as the game master, the, the doc is very carefully crafting the situation, and making sure that certain things are being adhered to, then, yeah, fantastic, quids in. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Tom, slagging off each other is important to every D&D. Hi, Celine, how are you? Nice to see you. And mm, who, what, who the dear bird now? Now leave and never return. Hi, now leave and never return like the name um but there you go right (laughs) so that's uh, dungeons and dragons as therapy like i said i think tonight's going to be a bit short like i say if anybody wants to call in uh just search on skype lap book show uh and i'll we'll have a chat (laughs) not a problem uh so in the news Right, you remember we've been talking about um, <laughs> hello from te- Tesco's. Oh, Tesco's. <laughs> I thought you were in a foreign country then, but <laughs> how are you doing, Nova? <laughs> ah, <fine>. Tesco's. <laughs> hey, welcome to Tesco's, eh? Um, right. <laughs> So in the news, in the news, the news, good news, everybody. 
Right, remember we've been talking at length over the period of whatever time it's taken this to actually happen. The uh, complete and utter rubbish about this company taking this guy to court for infringement of copyright over LARP arrows. Um, well, apparently it's been thrown out of court, and quite rightly too. So, a uh, trademark lawsuit over LARP archery gets thrown out of court. A painted, a patent, potato, a patent and trademark lawsuit over foam arrows used in live action role playing or LARPing. I really like how they've got to explain this every time. Uh, has been thrown out because the Indiana federal judge overseeing the case ruled that he lacked jurisdiction. That's strange as it's done worldwide. Um, for defendant Jordan Gwyther, who owns the community website, LARPing.org, and sells foam arrows as a side business, it's a victory, although a narrow one. Now, um... <laughs> boo, yay! Uh, <laughs> now, I did uh, look into this a bit further, and basically the, the, the judge did rule uh, that... Uh, no one can actually say uh, where the actual, where the origins then, um, who was the first person or group to actually make foam safe LARPing arrows. Um, and because of that, he doesn't actually think that the patent and the trademark and what have you, uh, etc., uh, is actually valid anyway. So he said, look, I can't rule on this. If you want to go further, this is going to have to go to a, to a high, so I'm just throwing it out. Uh, and if you want to take it further, it's going to cost you quite a bit of cash. So I have a sneaky feeling that this company is just going to go. Um, <laughs> yes, usually we do keep our frivolous lawsuits. Uh, <laughs> but this time, uh, the, the judge has gone, nah, this is ridiculous. Yeah, can't, can't be doing with this. So... Unless somebody actually uh, wants to call in with some questions or what have you, or if you in the chat room have got any questions, give them to me now, because that's all I've got <laughs> for tonight. It would have been a much longer conversation <laughs> and what have you. But hey, this is going to happen every now and then. Think of this as a, as a special edition, just the highlight show. And the highlight, of course, being me. Uh, so on that note, let's um, let's listen to some some Lars do some Star Trek. Well, Lars trekking. Apparently that's all I captured. So, thanks for tuning into LARP book. <laughs> all 15 minutes worth almost. Um, and we'll catch you again, I suppose. So again, very sorry that the tonight show was quite short, but without having someone or something to discuss with, and I'm not going to bring Tom in. My right? simple as that, he's not well. He's offered, but he's not well. Yeah. Rob is, as I say, repenting for his sins. Um, Klaus, I'm afraid, sorry, very sorry for Rob. Um, he got it all wrong. I don't know how he could possibly get your name wrong, but that's just the way it is. So this is me signing out from LARP book and have a fantastic evening. I might actually play some Overwatch after, who knows? Uh, in fact, if you want to catch me um, playing Overwatch, uh, look for Tricky Hunter UK. Try not to say that when you've um, got a couple of pints in you, I can tell you. So uh, on that note then, I will I will say um, good night to you all. So good night.
So if you'd like to get in contact with the show, just email lartbookshow at gmail.com. If there's a topic you would like us to discuss or something cool you saw or fancy writing an article for the website, then email the show, lartbookshow at gmail.com. The music was provided by Ben Sound at bensound.com. Don't forget to pop across to our Patreon page, patreon.com lartbook. Um, I want to say a big thank you to all of our lovely patrons who make it a bit easier to keep this show going. Uh, you can listen to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Twitch and Podbean. Just search for LARPbook in your whatever podcatcher you use. We are all over the web. The Tinter web. Uh, as I said, the email address is LARPbookshow at gmail.com and go across to the website larpbook.com news reviews there's plenty of stuff there you can follow us on facebook twitter google plus just search for larpbook it's simple as that you will find us and don't forget give us a five star review on itunes so i've been your host Stuart edwards have a fantastic evening bye bye